UFC review time. <coughs> um, this is, of course, the afternoon card yesterday in Sweden. I missed the undercard, so you won't be getting much of a breakdown of those fights. I apologize. You will, however, be getting the main card. All right, so just a quick recap of the undercard in terms of who won. Jason Young beat Eric Wisely. Very pleased by that because I'm not a fan of Eric Wisely. And I like watching Sean Good fight, although I don't think he's that great of a fighter. Simeon Thorson beat Bessie Musif. Resum Daddy kind of surprised me by being used to land Esquerda. I thought Esquerda would take that, but uh, that wasn't the case. Francis Carmel beat Magnus Sendeblad. No surprise there. CLB Diabati beat Tom DeBlas in what I'm hearing was a controversial decision. This is what I'm hearing from certain sources, but uh, that is all. And Poppy Abedi, um, probably got his walking papers getting rear naked by James Head. So the question, of course, becomes is James Head going to be a legitimate welterweight um, contender? Because we saw this fight on the main card. Or is Poppy Abedi just in MMA horrendously overrated and his judo doesn't transfer? Um, the concern for Head is that, again, he got put on his back, and he seems to get put on his back every fight I've ever seen, except for the Gerald Harris fight for some reason. Um, Nick Ring embarrassed him at 185, so we'll see. Um, it, it's interesting to see where he goes, and it's interesting to see if Poppy Betty gets another fight in the UFC. Um, Brad Pickett, Demacio Page, fight of the night, I agree. These two guys do everything kind of like very 100%. I mean, when they take you down, they slam you, um, basically. Uh, in the end, though, Page, and I keep saying this, um, he doesn't pace himself well, which causes a cardio problem. And he doesn't seem to be able to defend chokes at all. We thought it was just guillotine chokes, but apparently he's rear as well. Um, although he was rocked for this one. Which was impressive in itself, because we, we haven't seen Page rocked in, in forever. Um, people are talking about how he should probably be cut because he's lost three in a row. That being said, if he gets caught, I'm going to feel bad about it because if you look at Demacio Page's three losses, Demetrius Johnson, Brian Bowles, Brad Pickett. I've just said two guys who have fought for, one guy who's held the Bantamweight title, one guy who's fought for the Bantamweight title, and one guy who's been in like two or three number one contender matches. Um, two, two, two number one contender matches for Brad Pickett. And are all... I mean, two of them are definitely top 10. Bantamweights and Pickett, if not top 10, is like 11th or 12th. So, yeah, it's a little harsh. That's some harsh matchmaking. It's time to give Paige kind of a little bit of a gimme, um, kind of. Would be nice. Um, but he'll probably get cut. Still, good fight. Exciting fight. Stand-up was nice. Um, the pace was good. The takedowns were exciting, ironically. Um... And we got a nice submission finish. Demarcus Johnson, John McGuire. This got sub of the night with McGuire getting the arm bar. Negatives for John McGuire. Um, one, he really needs to check leg kicks a lot better than he does. Two, the stand-up still seems, to me, very slow. No one else is really bringing that up. But, you know, it's something to improve. That being said, his gypsy jiu-jitsu is, is excellent. Um, he got Demarcus Johnson. With a beautiful arm bar. Um, but to Arx Johnson takes from this, you know, he'll probably get a chance, another chance. He's an ultimate fighter winner, not winner, pardon me, but finalist. He tends not to lose two in a row <laughs> um, somehow. They kind of give him the gimmies right after this, so we'll look for him to fight some newcomer or um, other former tougher that's still kicking around in the welterweight division. But um, solid, solid win for John McGuire. Daniels look pretty impressive, although got some weaknesses that I really need working on. Dennis Seaver, Diego Nunez, or Nunes, good fight. Um, they gave it to Seaver. I gave it to Nunes. I don't have a problem with this actually, though. Um, this is not a judge rant. Um, this is just rounds one and two, very very close. Round three definitely Seaver, so I think that probably made an impression. Um, the thing working against Seaver though that I thought was. Um, that the judges may have actually given him credit for was he was throwing a lot of stuff, but it was largely, largely getting blocked. Um, very little of it landed, and and in times he completely missed. That's why I gave the fight to Nunes, but I don't have a problem with this decision. Four Nunes, um, what I would recommend for him, because this has come up a couple of times, is he just needs to be more aggressive. 
he really does. Uh, when he when he got aggressive and he got the clinch on Seaver and started kneeing him to the body, that was when he had his greatest success. Not when he was sitting back and kind of letting Seaver come forward. Um, that was when he had his his least success, but it's what he did quite repetitively. Very hard to keep down though, and uh, he's an impressive guy in that regards. I mean, he was a top ten featherweight coming into this fight. He probably still is a top ten featherweight. Seaver might actually be in the top 10 featherweight now, which is kind of weird because Ross Pearson isn't, despite the fact that Ross Pearson has beaten Seaver at lightweight. Just because his, his outing against the Sun Cow was uh, not tremendously impressive. Um, but yeah, what's next for. I haven't been doing a lot of what's next because for some of these guys, I, I don't have a clear idea, but for Noons, um, I don't know. Um, you know, he's still he's still definitely a guy you can build people off of, so he'll probably not get a gimme fight. Um, I'm not really sure who would be that. Excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me. Apologies. Um, as receiver, you could do the rematch with Ross Pearson, which people have been talking about, but actually a fight that, that really interests me is partially, partially one with Bart Palaszewski. Um, that would interest me. Paul Tiago, C.R. Bahadazada. Boom. Over real quick. That's all there is to it. Um, the unfortunate thing about this fight is that um, all the suspected weaknesses of CR's game were not answered. We know he's got KO power. We know he's got good striking. What we want to know is the ground game and the wrestling defense, which was not interest an answered in this fight at, at all. Um, where do you go from this? Because, I mean, Paulo Tiago is you know, a top 15 welterweight in the UFC. Maybe even, maybe even like very low top ten coming into this fight, um, and it's hard to say who you would even you know send CR out there. Although I'm going to throw this out here, Martin Campman CR that could be interesting. Um, I would enjoy that. As for Paul Tiago, he's still going to be around. He's still a tremendous, tremendous draw in Brazil. He's still a tremendous draw in you know people who like grappling, puts on exciting fights. Um, an interesting fight for him would be TJ Waldberger. I'd like to see that fight. Brian Stan versus Celeste Sakara. Perfect matchup for Stan. A, a guy who who feels he needs to stand with him. Not not that Sakara doesn't have ground skills and doesn't have wrestling. Because he does. Um, he has a surprising amount of wrestling, actually. Uh, very good wrestling defense. He can take people down. He could have won this fight had he taken Stan down and held him down. But, um, you know, he didn't. Wanted to stand with him. He got rocked, got put on his back, and he got pounded out from, you know, um, guard, strangely enough, um, which is something you don't really expect to see. What's next for Stan? You know, they've gotten him back on track after the loss to Sonnen. He's going to have to, you know, I've always said I want to see Stan versus Brock Allen Belcher. Um, that's, that's a little bit of a dream fight for me. Um, so, you know, now would not be a bad time to make that happen. As for Sakara, um, how many losses in a row is this for Sakara? He's lost to Weidman and Stan. Had one three in a row before that. He'll get another shot. Uh, basically, anyone anyone interested in standing with Sakara is always an interesting fight. Um, so, you know, put something around that lines together. I don't think there's a particular name that comes to mind. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, before someone says it, yeah, I missed my sideburn when I was shaving. So, it's still there. It looks a little weird. A little unbalanced. Anyways, Gustafson and Thiago Silva, um, too much reach. <laughs> too much reach and too much good footwork for Gustafson um, for Silva to win this fight. Silva, actually, when he was able to get in range and, and cut the cage off, had a lot of success. He landed a very high percentage of his strikes um, cutting the cage off and landing good shots. But... The fact that he couldn't cut the cage off the majority of the time was problematic. And Gustafson, you know, just using that reach, using that. I still say he, he's the most interesting fight for John Jones, although at this point, no, I don't think he can beat John Jones. He's still a work in progress. So is John Jones, which is of course the problem as these two continue to rise. At what point can Gustafson get close enough to, you know, make a fight out of it? Um but I think he beats pretty much anyone else in the division except for maybe Phil Davis or Rashad Evans. Um, they're the only two guys I see particularly doing the job. Um, him versus Rampage will be interesting, but Rampage is coming off the loss. Him versus Bader, um, that could also be interesting. 
for Thiago Silva, um, you know, we know what he brings to the table. He's more of a well rounded guy, good stand up, good ground game, a lot of power, um, and, and a good chin because he took some shots in this fight. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't really know what to do with him. I mean, he's lost every time he's gotten to that Linda's test, the, you know, Gustafson in this time, uh, Rashad Evans in the past, Leo Machida in the past, and he's not taken that big step. Um, fight with him and Little Dog, that could be pretty interesting. Maybe make that happen. But, um, yeah, that's it for UFC on Fuel TV Sweden. Um, I'm not seeing number four. Or at least Fuel TV 2. I thought we were past that. I thought we were on like three or four. Anyways, I'm going to be watching Bellator tonight. So, you know, if you're in Canada, enjoy that. 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Please support the MMA organizations that are not the UFC as well. And that is all. Also, Team Faber now up on the Ultimate Fighter.